So I've wanted to make this video for a while. Um, I'll try to give you the text version, but probably ain't gonna happen, so bear with me. Um, as some of you know, prior to Shimmer, Sparkle, and Speckle, we had um, some Italian Greyhounds that we had rescued, um, and it was not a good experience for us. In fact, at that time I said I would, I would never adopt an Italian Greyhound ever again um, from what I had gone through. And I had decided that if I ever did get an Italian Greyhound again, um, I would buy it from a breeder as a puppy. Um, that way we could raise it up right. We knew that it was loved. We knew that it wasn't damaged. So just going to share that story with you guys. Um, so, you know, once upon a time before Shimmer, Sparkle, and Speckle, we did decide um, that we wanted to adopt an Italian Greyhound. We had met somebody who had Italian Greyhounds and we thought they were amazing, were able to spend some time and just knew that that was the dog and the breed that we wanted. Decided to start researching locally and within my state and come to find out Italian Greyhounds are a very rare breed where I live so if we were going to adopt or get from a shelter it just wasn't going to happen. They weren't around. So upon further research we ended up finding Italian Greyhound Rescue that ended up being a couple states away. Um, we had contacted them and let them know that we were interested. Um, they let us know we were going to have to go um, through their application process to get approved. We had to fill out a ton of paperwork. They had to do sort of a background check. They had to send somebody in to do a home visit. Um, and, you know, we had to pay a fee for the animal. It's not free. I think at the time it was like $250. So I uh, went through that whole process, ended up getting approved. There was nothing available, if I remember right, at that time. So um, we kind of had to wait. Um, and the other thing, too, is when we did find a dog, we were going to have to go pick the dog up because rescue does not ship or fly their animals. But they do set up transports where volunteers, um, you know, volunteer to meet each other from city to city, state to state. So um, we get a call one day from the rescue and said, hey, um, we got some dogs in. Um, I said, but here's the story. So the rescue had come upon a group of Italian greyhounds that we were um, basically just left to themselves with no care or anything um, in a barn um, for, I don't know, it was a year, a year and a half. Um, somebody had to been feeding them and whatever human contact they did have, it was not good because when the rescue showed up, um, they had a heck of a time even trying to round up the Italian Greyhounds to, to get them out of there. Um, they were just wild and traumatized and scared um, and skinny and their ears were frostbit and it was just really bad shape. They'd basically been left in that barn to themselves um, since they were puppies from, from the story that I got. Um, so they were pretty damaged um, and you know we thought hey we could give a great home to, to one of them and give it a way better life than what it had. So we said, hey, we'll take one. So um, a friend and I drove to the next state over and, and um, met the transport and we picked up the girl and she was adorable. She was the sweetest Italian Greyhound. She was so scared and um, just so meek and fragile and um, she was just a sweetie pie. Um, so we brought her home and introduced her to the family, and she um, she had a really hard time. You know, she went from no human interaction to a lot of human interaction. And this is really what I wish I would have known at the time. Um, I would have never done this knowing what I know now. Um, I really wish the rescue would have known well enough that you don't take a dog that has had zero inter human interaction and take it out of a dysfunctional situation like that and then put it into a family of six um, with four of those being children. I, to me, that's just way overwhelming. 
Um, and I'm sure, you know, the rescue just wanted to rehome the animals and have them have good lives and everything. But honestly, looking back, mm -mm, bad situation. Um, I personally feel like um, those sort of animals should have been with somebody very special who could um, give them a quiet environment, um, who had the one-on-one -on -one time with them to rehabilitate them and, you know, just get them introduced to, to reality with humans. So, anyway, that's one thing I really wish I would have known. It, it could have saved us all a lot of heartache. So, anyway, we get this girl home and, um, you know, she... She was scared. She didn't want anything to do with with any of us, really. She came to me, and I would comfort her best I could, but she just didn't want anything to do with the kids or the other animals because we had a couple other dogs at the time. Um, and, you know, we, we had to take her out on a leash to go potty because if we took her off the leash, she'd just run, and she wouldn't come back to us um, and just that sort of thing. So very scared and just always running and hiding and that sort of thing. So, you know, a few weeks went by and we thought, you know, maybe we need to contact the rescue and just get another one. Maybe she needs a buddy. Maybe, maybe if we could take two dysfunctional dogs and bring them into a home together, that would be good for them. So we contacted rescue, um, went through that process, um, another long trip to go to another state to pick up the second rescue from transport. Um, my husband did at that time with a friend um, and they brought her home and the poor little thing was just terrified. She was so skinny and so shaky and so scared um, she was actually worse off than the first rescue that we had brought home. Um, she was just almost, she was just off the, off the charts, you know, really. I'd never been around a dog that scared. If, if she got off the leash, she would just run crazy and we couldn't get her in the house. And I think because I had two dysfunctional dogs that came out of a dysfunctional circumstance that had not had human interaction, those two really fed off of each other with their negative energy. And so it was like multiplied. And it ended up being really bad. And I felt really bad for my kids because the dogs didn't want anything to do with them. They couldn't get close to them. I mean, my kids tried to be as gentle and sweet and loving to them. And they just... They wouldn't have anything to do with it. But you know, we we were toughing it out and just trying to do what we could do. I eventually had contacted um, the rescue and said, hey, this isn't really working. We've tried everything, don't know what to do. And you know, they were really good to help us out um, and got us um, in contact with some other people and made resources available to us. and. Um, we accessed all of our resources and just nothing seemed to help. So, um, you know, eventually down the road, it got to the point, um, the, the dysfunction of these two together was so bad that, um, we decided, um, we were going to have to return the second one. And it was really taking a toll on, on us as a family um, and our relationships and our household and everybody was walking on eggshells because of the dogs. You know, our whole lives just changed and we're revol revolving around them and that's really no way to, to have to live. And it's really not fair to my kids, you know. Um, it's not what having a pet should be about. So we ended up um, having to set up another transport. We met some people in our state uh, who could pick the dog up and return it, you know, to, to the rescue. And even as dysfunctional as that was, um, it, it was still hard, you know, because you do develop some sort of a bond and you have to say goodbye. So, you know, it wasn't easy. Some time goes by and the gal from rescue, she calls and she says, hey, I got some good news for you. Um, I got this, uh, this dog came in that sh her owner is being deployed or moving or whatever and is not allowed to take her animal with her. Um, we think she would be a great fit for you guys because she's an eight-month-old puppy and 
we just think she'd be a great fit. And we were like, that's awesome. We will take her. We need a dog like that. Um, you know, maybe a happy little puppy will help, um, help our first rescue, just kind of help her come out of some of that dysfunction. So again, we loaded up and went to another state and got this puppy, and uh, she was amazing. She was the sweetest, coolest dog and happy, and we took her to the dog park on the way home, and she had a great time and um, got her home, and we were outside introducing her to the first rescue. And During this time, um, one of my kids had been gone and came home and had walked outside while we were all out there and the first rescue was still very scared and would bark at people and so when he came out into the backyard um, she just went off and she started barking at him and running around uncontrollably and it's almost like her reaction to him triggered something in the puppy and the puppy started doing the same thing um, and from that day forward, she wanted nothing to do with my son. She would not go near him. She was terrified. Um, she would just run for her life every time he was around. Um, and it was really sad because <laughs> they, they'd never even seen each other before. And, um, you know, all he wanted to do was just have a relationship with this puppy and hold her and love her and play with her and She's having nothing to do with it. Another sad situation that we, we did our best to work through. So uh, fast forward probably a year, and uh, I just couldn't do it anymore. I just, things were a tiny bit better, but still very dysfunctional. And um, we were all starting to suffer at this point. Um, my stress was probably affecting the dogs and that my stress was affecting my family and just all of our relationships were suffering and we were just trying to hold it together and uh, that's just no way to live. So we had some pretty important decisions to make. I, I straight up told everyone, I said, you know guys, I can't, can't do it anymore. Um, <laughs> It's really starting to take a toll on all of us. Um, contacted the rescue, and um, at this time, when I had contacted them, um, the lady I had been working with, she was no longer in that position for whatever reason, so somebody else had taken over her position. And this person really didn't know anything about us other than that we had failed, uh, failed rescues. And she flat out said to me, you know what, I just don't think this is the dog for you. You need to find another breed. And I just told her, I said, you know what, I, I refuse to believe that. I don't believe that. And I really didn't appreciate her response to me either um, in the fact that it was almost like she was not willing to acknowledge the fact that um, the animals had issues, that we were the issue. Um, but, you know, we, we did everything and anything that we could, and it just didn't work, and it was time to just be done. Um, the thing with uh, animal rescue, if you rescue animals from this agency, you are not allowed to redistribute them or give them away or send them to a shelter or sell them or anything. Um, part of the deal is when you adopt them, you have to send them back to the rescue, so that's the deal. So... Again, we had to um, set up another transport. We um, had to take them to another town um, to somebody who was going to, you know, transport them from there. And uh, thank God the kids were not with us that day. They had said their goodbyes uh, before we had left that day because it ended up being just a very heart wrenching, just heartbreaking event. My husband had developed a very deep bond with that third rescue. Um, they were like peanut butter and chocolate, peas and carrots. I mean, those two, they, they were inseparable and they did everything together and they were buds and that was his girl. So 
the day that we dropped them off, um, you know, we said our goodbyes. And um, it, at the time, it was, seemed like one of the hardest things we had ever done. Um, we had invested two and a half years of our life um, into these animals. And to have to say goodbye like that, even as dysfunctional, that does not mean that it's easy. Um, but to have to to have to watch those two be separated with the bond that they had was is really really difficult and still to this day he misses her so you know it was heartbreaking both ways because um she was losing her dad and he was losing his girl and um but you know it was all for the best um they needed to move on and, and um, just have a better, complete life somewhere where, where they weren't scared or that they could adapt to their environment um, that wasn't so busy, maybe, I don't know. So that was a um, very difficult day for us, and uh, we shed a lot of tears over that deal um, for days and weeks. You know, our whole family uh, was grieving. And uh, during that time as well, we ended up losing um, one of our other pets in that process. They had passed away, so um, about six months later, we had no dogs, no animals. We, it was just kind of a really interesting time. We didn't have any animals to take care of. We had no responsibility as far as that went. We could come and go as we wanted. Um, and we just went on with life, you know, and continued to heal and mend. And it is true, you know, time does heal. And um, we moved on, and it really was for the better. Um, it was kind of like a breakup, you know. It's really hard at the time. and But once you do it and you go through the pain of it and you look back, um, you know that it was, it was the best decision for both sides. Um, and that was our situation. It was. It seemed like that was just one of the hardest things we had to do, but it just was the best decision. Um, and still to this day, I know in my heart it was the right decision to return those dogs. So I wasn't ready to, to have any more animals for a while. Um, but I don't know what happened. Several months down the road, I must have been on the Internet just kind of cruising, cruising through looking for breeders and um, had come upon Shimmer and she just caught caught my eye and caught my heart and showed my husband and said hey what do you think do you think we could give this a go again and we really 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 processed it before we made that decision we said you know I think we're ready we can do this um, so we made the purchase we had to wait for like uh, it seemed like an eternity it was six weeks we had to wait and before we could actually get her and we didn't tell the kids we wanted it to be a surprise for them so um, that obviously was our first video on YouTube um, did not plan on doing YouTube the only reason we even ever posted that just because it was the simplest way to share it at that time we wanted to share it with the breeder and with our friends and our family um, of our new puppy and so we just kind of threw it out there. And then people were like, hey, put out more videos. And I'm like, I didn't know people were interested. So really, it's because of you guys um, and your re requests of wanting more videos is, is why we do what we do. So um, anyway, you know, we got Shimmer and you know how that went down. And then we just got to thinking, you know, we do want another one. We know that we want another one because we just believe that, you know, they, she should have a buddy. And we just thought it made sense if we got her a buddy that her, was her same age. So um, we ended up getting two Italian greyhounds within, you know, one month. So I, I had found Sparkle um, on the Internet and got her here. And then about a year later, um, again, I was looking for through dogs, which I probably shouldn't have been doing, and found Speckle, and I was just like, okay, one more, um, and that's it, we're done, and I quit looking at puppies then, <laughs> so it's just been a really, really good experience with Super Mice Girls, um, 
you know, when we got shimmer, it was really part of our healing process. Um, it was part of the healing process for my kids and for my family. And from having such a negative experience, it was just really refreshing to be able to have a positive experience um, and for our kids to just have a positive experience with their pets. I wanted to share that story, um, but at the same time, I, I didn't want to share that story just because it was just, you know, so heartbreaking. And, you know, we, we've kind of got some hate from people because we, we did buy a dog from a breeder. Um, and we did have our dogs flown in. And, but, you know, they don't know. They don't know what we've been through. And we made that decision because of what we had been through. So, you know, it, people make judgments really quick off of basically nothing, um, off of just a video. So I don't care, like, how many hate comments I get about that we bought from a breeder or um, we've flown our puppies in or whatever um, you know what what matters is the life that they have here with us and you all know it's good we have good life they have a good life um, I mean look at them my shimmery my burgle my pickle <laughs> the takeaway from this video um, you know if that's the whole thing. I wish I would have known all that I know now. I wish I would have known back then would have saved us so much problems and heartache. I would say if if you're considering adopting an Italian Greyhound from like a rescue or something like that, um, if at all possible, make sure you can spend some time with the animal. Um, in our case, that wasn't possible. Um, knowing what I know now, I would never adopt an Italian Greyhound without being able to spend time with it. Um, you need to know that you're going to be compatible with that animal and that, an that that animal is going to be compatible with you. Um, plus, Italian Greyhounds are just not for everybody. Um, they're a pretty sensitive breed. Um, they can be high maintenance. They are, as far as I'm concerned, the best companion dogs ever. So um, they just need a lot of love. Um, a lot of attention. They are like little magnets. They just want to be with you all the time. And, you know, they're just not a dog that you get and kind of just expect that they're going to sit off to the side. So it's an investment for many, many, many years. And people need to, they need to weigh it out whether they're ready to make the investment um, into their pets. And I, I really believe if people would take the time to consider everything um, and all that's involved. You kind of got to think through all the way. That would save a lot of dogs from going to rescue. You know, I'm not against rescue, but um, you just need to know what you're getting into. Um, and I know some of us get really excited and say, oh, you know, I, just, I want that dog. I want, that's, I want it, you know, but you just need to know what you're getting into. You need to do your research. You need to be willing to make an investment of your time and your money and everything. You know, if you choose to buy from a breeder, you need to just um, just make sure they're a reputable one. Um, check their references and check out, you know, people who have purchased dogs from them. And, you know, just make sure you're not buying from a puppy mill and such. So anyway, that's the story, obviously not the text version. So I just want to um, thank you all, all the Super Mice Girls fans, for your continued support and love. Um, thank you for loving these girls. And really, it is because of you guys that I continue to put out videos. Um, it's for your love for my girls. So um, thank you, and we will see you on the next video. Oh, and by the way, to whoever that person was that told us that Italian Greyhounds were not the breed for us, well, obviously they were wrong. <laughs>